Hello friends, welcome back to the channel. We've got our friend John McCarthy here, the inventor of Lisp, and we're gonna be taking a little break, a break from our uh, project called Natalie to build a Ruby implementation in C++. That's what a lot of my previous videos have been about, but this is going to be a little bit different quest. Uh, got a build failure, nice. Uh, and we're going to be making our own Lisp. Uh, this is a fantastic project called Mal by Joel Martin. And I love this project. Uh, this has taught me so much about language implementation. And uh, it's just a really fun process to go through. There is a complete guide with all the steps and fun graphics. And there's a ton of implementations of Mal that people have done in every language that I can think of or that I've ever heard of, C and C++ and C Sharp and Elm and yada, yada, yada. Um, there's even an implementation in XSLT by Ali, our friend Ali. And I don't even know how that works. Uh, as, as I remember, XX, XSLT is kind of a uh, weird beast and the fact that you can implement mal or lisp in and that is just uh really cool but uh this this guide is is really great and uh as i remember mal is inspired by closure which is a another great lisp dialect and uh has a really powerful macro system and it's built on the jvm uh, this is kind of what Clojure looks like if you're unfamiliar. Uh, I do love that Clojure, you, you could have little square brackets around the arguments, kind of helps them visually stand out. Um, if you've ever been turned off of Lisp because of the parentheses, I will say uh, it does take a little bit of getting used to, but once you understand the beauty of code as data, uh, it starts to make a little bit more sense. Another fantastic Lisp uh, that I've used before is Racket, and it has just a ton of built-in libraries that you can use for all kinds of algorithms and data structures and uh, uh, GUI programming and everything you, you would want. Um, but anyway, so today, though, we're going to start on the MAL guide, and we're going to make our own Lisp. It's not going to be as big as these other languages, of course, but it's going to be ours, uh, or Joel Martin's. <laughs> it's going to be something that we're going to implement in C++, and I invite you to follow along, and uh, I don't know. See, We'll see how it goes. And uh, was there anything else I wanted to say? Um, the other really cool thing about MAL is the tests. All of the tests for all of the steps are in, written in MAL, in Lisp itself, and they're already runnable. So we don't have to implement the tests. We just have to implement the language and run the tests, and it will tell us if we did it right. And that is a really really powerful thing for us to uh to be able to have that as a starting point so let's let's get right in and start with step zero the REPL and this is just setting up some boilerplate it's step zero because you don't really end up doing a lot but it's a good good uh, good place to get your feet wet and get a feel for for what we're doing so we're going to be using um the stream IO stream uh, library of C++ and we're going to use get line to get a line of input and um, yeah uh, I don't pay a lot of attention to the to the uh, pictures uh, I just read the steps and follow along so first thing though I have it cloned and checked out but let's go ahead and remove uh, get uh, let's see rmrf CPP. We're going to just remove the existing implementation because we want to build our own. So remove existing implementation so we can build our own. Okay, and uh, we're going to build a step zero REPL.CPP file. So let's do, uh, let's make that directory again. Um, and then we're going to make a file called this and open that up and we're going to include string and include IO stream and uh, let's do the steps. So back over to the guide, uh, add four trivial functions, read, eval, print, and rep. Read, eval, and print are just stubs that return their first parameter, which is a string, and rep calls them in order, passing the return of the input 
a return to the input of the next. Okay, fair enough. Add a main loop that repeatedly prints a prompt, it has to be user, gets a line of input from the user, calls rep with that line of input, and then prints out the result from rep. Okay, that's a lot of words. It's not as hard as it sounds. We're going to do read, eval, print, and rep. So let's go ahead and do that. std string read takes a std string input, and we're just going to do a return input. And let's copy this, and we'll say eval, and um, print, and rep. And so the first step will be to um, hmm, read the input, oh, what have I done, uh, and turn it into an AST. AST equals read input. And we'll save that. Oh, it reformatted. Thank you very much. Uh, and then we're going to do auto result equals eval that AST, that abstract syntax tree. And then we're going to um, output, I guess. We're going to print. Now, this is not printing to the screen. This is just changing the resulting uh, object into a string representation. And so we're going to do result like that. Uh, actually, you don't even need to store this, do we? We'll just do return. And then uh, we need a main. We'll return zero, and this will be an infinite loop. And let's read this one more time. So add a main loop that repeatedly prints a prompt. It needs to be user greater than. Let's go ahead and copy that. Uh, gets a line of input from the user. It calls rep with that line of input, then prints out the result. Okay. Uh, so let's do. And for the input, we're going to be using this uh, get line function, uh, which looks something like oops, which looks something like this. So it's going to call std get line, passing in the stream and the reference to a variable to stick it. String input, and we're going to paste this here and change this to input. And um, then I guess we will do c out. Uh, the result, and we're going to call rep with the input like so, and I guess I need a new line, and uh, well, that's it. Let's see what happens. Uh, we'll just cd into that directory and run g++ oh, step zero, step zero repl, and let's run it and see what happens. So if I hit three, yeah, that works great. And if I hit Control D, then it freaks out because uh, the stream is closed. So we want to handle that. I believe the way you do this is to say if uh, the nothing was returned, then we want to break. And we'll just do that. Make. Uh, oh yeah, I don't have a make file yet, but we'll fix that in just a second. Yeah, okay, hit Control D and it closed just fine. Uh, so that's it. <laughs> that's all step zero. Really, really simple. Uh, like I said, step zero is not a lot there, but um, let's go ahead and read the rest of the guide and see what else we can do. Uh, we did this, we did this. Uh, oh, create a make file. We'll go ahead and do that. Let's do a make file. And um, Make, oh, I don't have this. Uh, do, 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 make file and C XX flags uh, G wall extra where oops, too many R's there. And uh, we're going to do step zero REPL depends on step zero REPL dot CVP. And we want it to run the C++ compiler with the C++ flags. And the output is step zero REPL and the input is step zero REPL CPP. And yeah, let's see if that works. Let's remove the file and run make again. And if I go over here and save the source file and remake, then it should rerun. Yep, step zero REPL. 
Okay, so the, the thing about this input is I can't go left and right and up and down, but we will fix that in a minute. There's no history, there's no cursor movement, but that is an optional step that we will do in just a second. But let's see if we did all of the main steps. It's time to run your tests, and so go to the top level and run this. So we'll just do that. We'll do it in another tab, though, uh, like so. And this is not Quux. This is CPP, step zero. Uh, but I did something wrong. What did I do wrong? Um, no such file run, CPP run. Um, okay, so there's a file. Let's see, what is it in the C um, implementation? Um, oh, it's just a bash script that, that runs the, the file. So we will copy that to here and run our tests again. Yay, success. All our tests are passing, uh, no soft failing tests, no absolutely failing tests. Um, I don't remember, I think soft failing tests are ones that you can skip and move on, but we'll probably be doing, uh, we'll probably not continue on until we get all of these, these working. But yeah, so it just tested with a whole bunch of input and it got exactly that input back. Um, I guess they're testing to make sure you didn't do anything weird with certain characters. I mean, there wasn't a lot there, but yeah, we got all our tests passing. And I think we can commit that because we're there. It says commit your new work, congratulations. And then we have an optional step, which is line editing. We'll get to that in a minute. Uh, so first let's commit this and just look through it to make sure this looks basically right. Okay, uh, step zero, implement basic REPL. Um, oh, in C++. Ah, so cool. Uh, very fun. Okay, and let's go work on this full line editing uh, support. And we're not going to write it because that's a big, big project. Uh, but we can use read line, edit line, or line noise. Okay, so read line is GPL. Uh, which infects everything that you um, included in. So you have to change your license and we don't want to do that. Uh, but edit line and line noise uh, are MIT or BSD, I, I can't recall. And there, uh, I actually like line noise, but um, if I recall on this, then this is just C and I don't think it's compatible with C++. But I did find this CPP line noise, and we're just going to use that because it's a single header, and we can just download and include it, and we'll just do that right now. So we're just going to grab this and raw and copy this and go here and wget this thing. Yeah. So now we have an extra file, and we can use it to add line editing and history. Uh, and we'll just uh, do that like this. So back over to our source. Uh, need to include, oops. Okay. Uh, include that. And then um, we'll do that in main. Uh huh. And uh, I don't care about the completion callback. Don't want multi-line, I don't think, not yet at least. Um, max length of history, uh, maybe you don't need to set that. I do want to load the history though from the file. Um, let's change this to history path just to be a little clearer. And uh, so now we get to change how this works. Um, interesting, this is kind of backwards. If quit, then break. Okay. Yeah, so we need that. And we're going to say, um, and this has the prompt built in. So we don't need that prompt there. And this needs to be user. And this needs to be input. And this needs to be if quit, then break. Uh huh. And at this point, we're just copying and pasting, which is fine, which is just fine. 
There's nothing wrong with that. So we're going to add the history of the input as a C string. Don't love that API, but that's okay. Uh, and then I believe we need to also save the history. We'll do that here. This is going to be history path. Well, uh, let's, uh, well, that's not going to work because our make file, um, CPP make file. Come on. Uh, we need to, no, we don't need to do anything because it's header. It's just a header. Okay. Uh, let's run make. Let's do step zero REPL. Um, we can go up and down for history. So I can go up through the history. I can go left and right and insert the stuff at the beginning or end. Um, I can go forward. I just learned this the other day. You can go forward by words with alt. Does that work? Alt F for forward. Oh, it's not working. Maybe, oh, I'm not hitting alt. Ah. Maybe that's a reline only thing. Interesting. Well, anyway, you have the basic uh, line editing stuff, which is cool, which is cool. And control D works. And let's make sure our tests still work. And they do. So, um, what did we change? We added a header, we changed how we get a line of input, and we save the history every time. And I guess, oh, we don't want history.txt. So let's do, 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 do dot get ignore history.txt, history.txt. And let's just add all that and commit it. So add uh, step zero, add line noise. Um, let's do line editing and history with line noise. Ah, and uh, did I set up the remote right? Yep, let's do a push. And we should have, uh, I don't have a copy of it anywhere. So here's our fork. I renamed it to mouse CPP. And uh, let's put something in the readme. Readme, and let's just delete all this. Um, uh, note. This is my own implementation of mal. I think it's lowercase in C++. C, uh, what is the URL? Copy link. Um, upstream for more information about mal. I don't want people finding this and thinking that it is something I did, because I certainly didn't. Uh, update readme to show this is just my own implementation. Um, yeah. So hopefully, and we can change this too. Uh, I'm not logged in, but that's okay. I'll do it later. Uh, yeah, this is my own implementation of Mal in C++. See upstream for more information about Mal. That's it. That's it. Uh, so in the next video, we're going to go on to step one, read and print. Uh, we're going to uh, convert a string like this into tokens and then convert it into an abstract syntax tree. And we're going to do all kinds of fun things. So stay tuned for next video. It's going to be great. I hope that you are inspired to try this project out and build your own Lisp. Uh, you will learn a lot. I promise you that. And uh, it's pretty rewarding. So I guess with that, thanks for hanging out with me today. I hope to see you next time.